My question is on uh, asbestos liability tort cases. It seems like this is uh, growing to be a bigger and bigger problem, including more and more companies, including a number of companies in the Dow Jones uh, 30 industrials. What do you see for Berkshire as the risks and opportunities in the operating and insurance businesses? And if you two were in charge of writing or structuring a settlement for the whole problem, how would you do it? Okay, I'm going to let Charlie tackle most of that because he's, he's, uh, we've both done a lot of thinking on it. I think Charlie's thinking is that, that uh, I know it's better and it may even be more extensive. Um, asbestos, as I mentioned in some of these retroactive contracts, is a big part of the liability, but it really doesn't make any difference unless uh, it's it much more dependent on the speed of payment than the amount of payment. We are capped. Uh, on all those type of contracts. So uh, there's a figure in the annual report about aggregate asbestos and environmental liability, but and that number may look quite big compared to some other insurance companies, but most of that there's a limit on. And uh, it's a good thing because asbestos continues to explode. It's just, it, it, we talked about it last year at this meeting, and I said no matter how bad you thought it was, it was going to be worse. And it it has been worse, and it will be worse. Uh, and you make a very good point when you bring up the fact that many companies that are thought to be, or have been thought to have been, uh, insulated from the asbestos uh, uh, litigation have now been dragged in one way or another, and that won't stop either. Uh, ironically, it's not impossible that that asbestos litigation actually produces some opportunities for Berkshire in, in terms of buying companies out of bankruptcy uh, free of their asbestos liabilities. Uh, we did that, although it occurred much earlier in the case, but we bought John's Manville, which, which was the, my memory, was the first major company, really big company, uh, to go into bankruptcy and be forced there by asbestos liability. That happened back in the early 80s. Uh, and that subsequently, they were cleansed of their liability by, in effect, giving a very high percentage of the of the company and its debt to the to the uh, plaintiffs uh, and their lawyers, I might add. Uh, and when we came along a year ago, I mean that was all past history, but. We probably wouldn't own the Johns Manville Company if it hadn't been for some uh, asbestos litigation uh, that started uh, 20 years ago or more. And we may see actually more companies that end up in Berkshire that have been forced into bankruptcy through asbestos. But it is a, it's really a cancer on, on the, uh, uh, the American corporate world and it's one that's growing and I think I'll let Charlie talk about it. <laughs> Well, the asbestos liability situation in the country has morphed into a very disadvantageous uh, situation where there's an enormous amount of fraud and the wrong people are getting money and there are vast profits for people who are arranging the fraud. And so it isn't a good situation. Uh, there's also real liability to people who have serious injuries. And some of those people are being deprived because the, the uh, meritless claims are taking so much of the money that there isn't adequate money in many cases for the, for the people who've had the worst injuries. Uh, the Supreme Court has practically invited Congress to please step in and create a solution, but deterred by the plaintiff's contingency fee bar Congress has refused to do anything. Uh, this is not a good situation, and uh, any of you who can do anything about it, I, I would encourage you to do so. What do you, what do you think it'll look like in five years, Charlie? I would be surprised if there were a constructive solution. I think we'll have more of the mess we have now. It's huge, too. Now, I mean, you... Uh... There are companies that some of you may own stock in that uh, have huge potential liabilities. 
uh, they didn't think they had those liabilities, uh, even maybe a few years ago. But they're, they're finding ways to, to drag in almost anyone. And, you know, it's a concern when we buy businesses because uh, uh, we are a deep pocket. And uh, a tiny, a smaller company may not have been worth people investing lots of hours on a speculative idea that they could create some kind of a some kind of a connection with uh, you know the ABC company and 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 uh, um, hundreds of thousands of people that are claimed to be sick but it gets more interesting if Berkshire it could get more interesting if Berkshire's involved so it it's 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 a real it's a real problem for uh, corporate America and they have not been able uh, in effect to come up with a solution. There was a solution, as I remember, and, and uh, the Supreme Court didn't allow it. Isn't that right, Charlie? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. We will be very careful, both in our insurance operations, but just as importantly in, in our acquisitions and all that, in terms of, uh, of uh, avoiding unnecessary exposure to asbestos liability. It, I'm not terrified at all about our insurance operation in terms of what's there from the past. I'm, I'm not saying that I know with any precision what the amounts will be, but I, that is not at the top of my list. But essentially you will have a plaintiff's bar that going beyond asbestos will try to turn any kind of uh, human adversity into uh, a claim against somebody that's got a lot of money. And that's going on with mold. I mean, you may have seen Ed McMahon is suing his insurer for $20 million for the mold in his house. I just wish I could get some of that mold. I mean... It, <laughs> you probably have it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're referring to the house. 